By the way, I'm looking out at all of you and I can't see much, but that's okay. Just so you know that if you're, yeah, hi, I've missed you. Um, I'm really thrilled to be here on the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, Mississaugas of the Credit, Wendat peoples under Treaty 13 and as well under the Williams Treaties for many of the Mississauga and Chippewa bands. I come to you from the territory of the Wasonic Nation, Heshka, Heshka Siama. It's an honor to be with you. A lot of people have asked me, by the way, how it is that I decided to run for leader of the Green Party of Canada again. And the honest answer is, I really miss FCM. I, I, where did my annual meeting with the mayors and council members go? So I'm really glad to be back. And I know you're going to have a lot of political speeches over the weekend. I just want to cut to the chase on where the Green Party is. Anything you ask us to put in the platform will be in the platform. That's how it works. We understand that on municipal questions, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities is not just a collection of elected people at the most effective level of government that we have in Canada, which is local and municipal governments. We understand that. We also understand that FCM is the smartest, most innovative think tank in the country. And we have found over many years, since I first worked on a platform for the Green Party of Canada for the first national election where I led the party back in 2008, you can take it to the bank that what we asked for in terms of reliable, sustainable transit money, predictable, secure funding was always there. So I know that this conference, you've been talking a lot about the crisis of homelessness the crisis of affordability for homes, questions of mental health and addiction, which are really constitute a national crisis, and the issues that we talk about a great deal, of course, in terms of climate and climate crisis. All of these things are where FCM as an organization and individual local governments are really at the place where the rubber hits the road. So yes, I chose federal political life I'm hugely honored to have been representing the people of Saanich Gulf Islands the last 12 years, which is quite extraordinary. I, I, in extraordinary in the sense that I never imagined uh, that, I, you know, being the first elected Green Member of Parliament to be honored with being re-elected over and over, and I have no intention of stopping. By the way, I have new knees, and they're still under warranty, so I'm able to tell my constituents that I've got no reason to stop. I'm not, we not wearing out. I just got new parts. So. Seriously, it's an honor to be here, and I want to use what time I have to take a slightly, you know, 40,000-foot view at what I see about the Canadian Federation. As I said, and it's not pandering to this crowd to say the obvious, when you're looking at where policies are focused on immediate needs of the people of this country, the ability to pivot, to be there when other orders of government need you, and I would say this is a nonpartisan comment, because Stephen Harper found it in 2008 in the financial crisis, where were the best partners defined to deliver economic stimulus funding? And we will all remember, some of you who were in government then will remember John Baird said he has to be shovel ready. Well, FCM stepped up and real projects happened in remarkably, remarkably quickly, considering that there were also hurdles put in the way. C'est toujours la réalité que c'est le niveau de... The municipal and local government is uh, the most efficient level of government and the most resilient and innovative in its approaches. Truth. So I step back, and by the way, I have to say to Don Peters, Deputy Mayor, I mean, that last panel was so good, but I walked in as Don was saying, when your house is on fire, you don't ask for a feasibility study. That, that should be in bronze uh, on every minister federally's wall. I look at what's going on in that community. I used to live in New Glasgow. I lived on George Street, Don knows. But anyway, I, I also am the sponsor of the bill. She mentioned the bill in Parliament on environmental racism, Bill C-226. It's now before the Senate. But a lot of it was inspired by what happened to the community of Picta Landing First Nation. So I want to mention there's a larger issue here that I don't, I shouldn't even be trying to fit it into the time I've got. But there's this really large Indonesian company called Paper Excellence, which has its headquarters in Vancouver. It's kind of dodgy. I'm going to say that out loud. They'll, they'll probably sue me. They have a lot of lawyers. But 
They've bought up Domtar and Resolute and Catalyst, and right now they're, they're the biggest, one of the biggest players, second biggest player in pulp and paper markets. And they're trying to force the mill at Picto Landing, Boat Harbor, to reopen by using a little known legal procedure by getting a judge in Vancouver to order the government of Nova Scotia into a private arbitration with this pulp and paper company that doesn't allow First Nations in the room. I, it's, it's so outrageous that since Don touched on this issue, I couldn't help mentioning it. Uh, it, it affects a lot of communities. There are many communities also in Quebec who are affected by this. It creates, creates a lot of concern. And we're seeing that many of the paper mills are being bought out by this Indonesian company. Paper excellence are going to be in front of the Natural Resources Committee on Tuesday. I'm going to be trying to get some decent questions into the guy. Anyway, what I really wanted to talk about is when I look at the role of the municipal order of government and I look at the way Canada works or doesn't work, I'd like to just suggest we need to fix the Federation and we don't want to open the Constitution to do it, right? So, so you know what, I'm sure that you'll, I mean, the, the British North America Act of 1867 may have worked then, but the idea that local governments, towns and cities are the creatures of provinces and have no identity outside and no political role outside of that does not work. The provinces, I heard that the Prime Minister said we have to get the provinces to step up. I could give you zillions of examples just in the last few years on COVID, trying to make sure we could get kids back to school safely. And by the way, FCM was trying to help a, a number of us that were working on that, including the teachers' unions and others, to say facilities like this that couldn't be open during COVID would have made good places for kids to go to school because they could have kept physical distancing and had ventilation. Anyway, the one group of people we couldn't get to even answer a letter was the Council of Education Ministers at the provincial level. The Minister for Transport, and I have a lot of arguments with Omar El Gabra, like the Robert Banks approval, but never mind. Uh, the Minister of Transport in late 2021 wrote a letter to every single provincial minister and territorial minister of transportation to raise the issue of, with the withdrawal of services from bus companies like Greyhound and others, what are we going to do to make sure we have local transportation between and among communities? He couldn't get a single provincial or territorial transport minister to answer the letter. Uh, the health ministers, we don't need to go down that road. And certainly on climate, we know that as a country of 10 provinces and three territories, one federal government, two official languages, Canada has never performed as well as the European Union of 26 or 27, depending on the time you take the census, separate nation states with 28 official languages, separate sovereign nations in the European Union are better able to collaborate on a climate plan than one federal government, 10 provinces and three territories with two official languages. This makes no sense. And it's because we have this balkanization province to province, the one thing you're ever gonna get, Doug Ford, in Ontario, and David Eby in British Columbia to agree on is let's all gang up and blame the feds. So I'm, I'm kind of fed up and I'm very nonpartisan about this in my fed upness. What, what we found out as Greens is there's a country just like us, we all remember that, well, not quite like us, no one's quite like us, but Australia in the Commonwealth, strong state governments, a federal government, and local municipal governments. They created a Council of Australian Governments. That's what we need to do in Canada. It's been in the Green Party platform now since, I think, 2015. But we would, and we would include, of course, indigenous governments at the table. So you'd have a policy table at the national level with the you know, prime minister and premiers and so on, and then individual tables for specific issues so we could have policy alignment, come up with shared goals, and put all our efforts in the same direction. I drew it out for, I remember I was sitting with, with, after an FCM conference some years ago, because Don Iveson was mayor of Edmonton. And he said, I really like, he said, you know what you've done? You've drawn a medicine wheel, right? It's a circle and you've got, drawn it in four quarters, federal, provincial, territorial, local, and First Nations, Métis, Inuit, all at the same table to figure out which direction Canada should go. We 
desperately need to empower your governments to be at the table with a status that is not creatures of the provinces. And we can't reopen the Constitution to do it. So our model, thanks, our model is Australia. It's extremely simple. It's a question of uh, managing the roles of the municipal, provincial, and federal government and indigenous governments. It's not necessary to reopen the Constitution to bring about a difficult change. Better than we do. As I said, I can get lots of examples. Where's our east-west electricity grid? That's the big energy project we need. We need to be able to get renewable energy from one province to the other and use the grid like a smart grid, like a battery, so we decarbonize faster and we make money everywhere we go because the price of electricity drops. If you decide your electricity is going to come from a supply side model like Muskrat Falls or Site C, to name two disastrous examples, you're going to waste money and electricity will cost more. If you want to go on a demand side model, you can do energy efficiency, conservation, solar power. The Okotoks facility in Alberta with solar came in at less than three cents a kilowatt hour. Okay. We need climate action now, and with the last three minutes of what I'm going to talk about, I know that FCM is working on adaptation. I know all of you in your own communities are. The federal government budget talked about natural disasters and climate events, but really only talked about flooding and talked about floodplain mapping. But we've got fires, as we know, wildfires throughout Alberta, through northern BC. We're going to see more fires. In my community, it's like the weather report now talks about fire season instead of summer. Smoke season. We get reports on where the smoke is going to be as if we were talking about a low pressure system. Coming from British Columbia, the summer of 2021, where 619 people died in four days, and I'll be blunt, because the province of British Columbia decided against declaring an emergency, said the, pro the individual municipalities can handle this. Cooling centers should have opened. People should have been warned. I talked to a lot of first responders who went through the PTSD. They just, to race into a home, to pull out someone who's not going to live to make it to the hospital once you put them in an ambulance. All the protocols were wrong for what to do in a heat dome. And I know all of you are living close to the question of what happens, depending on where you are, what happens with the next flood? What happens with the next wildfire? What happens the next time a major extreme weather event, a Hurricane Fiona, one storm, first time ever that one storm system ever hit five provinces? Climate crisis is real. We are in a climate emergency. Again, Don's words, when your house is on fire, don't ask me for a feasibility study. We are not acting like it's an emergency. I know that at the federal level, there is concern, but they don't know how to really deal with the next big extreme weather event. We need to pull together. We need to pull together around the same table and not after the next extreme weather event. The next time you see a forecast that says it's going to be up to 40 degrees Celsius coming to your community and it's going to sit there for a while under a weather system that makes it a heat dome, don't wait. Call, demand that the federal government tell the provinces to declare a state of emergency. Get as much ice as you can. Have it stored up in communities. Have it in places that have backup generators so if the power goes out, when we're in a heat dome, thousands of people don't die. I know this is a tough conversation, but you are the people on the front lines of this experience. And I don't see my colleagues in Parliament understanding exactly how near the next climate disaster is. I know you see it, you live it. I want to be as useful as I can to you. So does every single Green Party candidate across this country. But it's not a partisan issue. It's a matter of life and death. And you in the front lines need to be at the table before the events. You need to be playing the kind of role that your knowledge and experience of local conditions allows you uniquely to be. And I'll keep working to make sure that happens. Thank you for your time this morning.